What's up, guys? Killer Killer back here with another Empires and Puzzles video. And today, finally, the last list of my life. Yeah, right. But, um, finally, the last list, list of the four stars, or the ranking of the four stars, however I label it when I get to it. <laughs> uh, and today is purple, man. Lo and behold, the purple. And to your surprise, I'm surprised some things have come out that have changed this list quite a bit. And uh, happy to say that. So, guys, there is not a shortage of four-star purples. We currently have 14 in the game, according to my count. Again, if I left somebody out or forgot somebody, by all means, hit me in the comments and let me know. But uh, without further ado, let's start this list. This list does include the ninjas. The ninjas. So, kind of excited about that. Um, and, yes, that would skew two of my lists. Not much, but... For sure one of them, uh, the blue. But let's see what we got here. At number 14, I got to go with Ambiana. Um, Ambiana is a season two hero. She has ghost form. She's part of the soccer family. Sorry, I got something in my eye right as I'm doing the video. Um, and she, uh, I personally love Ambiana. I kind of like her. I dig her. But frankly, it's really tough to use a harder character. Strong, high survivability just not quite what you're looking for if you're building a team or using a team. I recently did use her in tournaments, and I think she's, I think she's excellent. Um, but she's one of these trick heroes. Uh, it's funny the class I have her kind of in. Um, simple fact that her attack power goes up when she goes into ghost form, therefore increasing her tile, which is weird because if it increased everybody's tile, kind of like Wukong or Tarlac or Wilbur or anybody like that. Then you'd be good to go. But it's just her tile increases. So she kind of fits into a, a baby, baby, baby Titan Killer. But if it's, yeah, while in Ghost Form, the caster gains a 82% attack. If it was everybody, that would change this card drastically. That would make her the purple Titan Killer. Um, but unfortunately, it's just her. So therefore, Ambiana's last, um, yes, yeah, she, she dispels everything when she goes in the ghost. She also dispels her buffs and debuffs. Um, soccer family is increased mana. Um, she's a sorcerer, which is cool. So when she hits you hard and reduces your mana, that's cool. But it's not enough to get her higher than what she is. She's just lackluster. A good try. I see what they were doing. It's interesting. I do like the ghost people. This kind of set us up for fighter, which I can't stand, but... Sorry, you gotta go. You gotta go down low. In at number thirteen, believe it or not, it's my boy Cheshire Cat, and this is another one that's kind of on your Titan team if you don't have defensive down, which I don't know who doesn't. But this one's fast defensive down, and it's forty-four percent defensive down against the Holy. The undispellable poison is cool. The changing around of the character is cool. He's fast. He's got the right family. Not mad about that, but again, these two don't go well together. Captain Diamonds and the Cat. And another thing, it's not an initial hit. non dispensable Poison is awesome. I think it works really good. I think that's really cool. Um, four turns. I just, I've stopped bringing Cheshire Cat for the simple fact that he just, not enough bang for his buck. It's other people out. Um, we've got some other higher-end heroes that work a little bit better together. We'll get you out of a fight a little bit faster than Cheshire Cat. I do like the defensive down on the yellow for Titans. I do like it for if you're going against the yellow team. But he's kind of a subpar substitute purple guy. He's fun on he's fun to play against on a defense because he'll change your he'll shuffle your team around and you don't know what to do. You're like, I don't know what to do. How do I what I had an order and now it's gone. But yeah, I got Chester down low. Uh still one of my favorite characters. Again, this is a, and not on I'm trying to do this with more of a overall overall opinion titan events tournaments uh day-to-day -day play uh in raids and wars so at number 12 i've got merlin this guy's special is awesome uh he's one of the mindless ones who takes away your whole mana when it goes off if you if you hit somebody problem is he is such a glass cannon no defense and no health I stopped using Merlin, and he's average, so if it doesn't go off and he gets killed, you're just out. And at 975 health and the four-star range now, that's too low. Merlin definitely needs an upgrade of health and defense of probably about 120 on both to be somewhere near usable again for me. 
Um, I think the Jinx is perfect for him, him being a wizard class. If the Jinx goes off with his special, hits 15% harder, that's awesome. Um, Mindless is awesome. You guys all know from Alf Freak and uh, Zoc, it works really good. Problem is, it's just he's such a glass cannon. His special is great. He's just not. This is one where the stats have killed him. I, I when I first got Merlin, I was like, oh man, this guy's awesome. And he used to, I used to love running Merlin and um, Merlin and Hansel to get together. But after a while, I started noticing he would just get dusted off real quick. So then I stopped running Merlin on my purple teams. Um, next I got Jafar. Jafar is another glass cannon. Just a little too low. Attacks great. Defense is low. Uh, 988, not that much more. Now, he does pair really well with his counterpart, um, Jabbar, but it's just for the simple fact he's just, he's too squishy. He's one of those I bring into tournaments or anything like that. He just dies really quickly. Um, at this level of play where we're at now, the four stars got to have more health than 900, anything. I don't care if it's close to 1,000. I don't care if the troop, it goes up. I don't care about all that. They just... They're dying too easily. Skins are out, or the costumes are out. Sonya and um, uh, Camden, they'll one-shot him or, or knock him almost dead, and then the tile will hit him. You know, so he's just not one of those that's going to last. He doesn't He doesn't survive. He doesn't survive long enough to put on a team. Uh, great starter. I could see him in events because he's one of the higher-hitting tile damage for purple, but he's too too weak. His, his class is bad, too. I don't like uh, Cleric's. I don't like cleric um, attackers. I like my clerics to be a little bit more healer or um, or um, buffers or supporters. But next, I got number 10. We got to go through these. We got so many. It's 14 of these guys. And then once I get to the top eight, I think you guys are going to be like, what the? <laughs> but anyway, so I got Boomer at number 10. Um, surprisingly, I use Boomer a lot more now because of the simple fact that he hits all. And the reason I use him a little bit more is because of somebody that's in the top five. Um, Boomer comes in with the uh, mana increase from the Pirates. And I want to say it's attack or hit. Attack or crit. Let's, let me double check. I believe it's attack. Let me see. Boomer is... Yeah, it's attack and mana. So he's got a great, um, great buff. Class is not so good. Barb, that's not really doing anything for him. Um, I find Barb to be actually one of the weakest classes they've got. That bleed is cool, but it's not great. And it does stack, but you almost need two Barbs to do that. And, like, at this point, like, I don't run my two Barbs together. Maybe I should. There might be a little extra bleed that I need to be adding to people. But um, that would be Kage and Grave. But I don't know. I just don't, I don't like the Barb class. It's not really – I mean, he's he's – Strong stats, again, I, I run him as a tank sometimes. He does protect himself against Holy with two others, and I run a lot of mono purple so for the event. So Boomer does have a lot of playability for me now based off some other people. But overall-wise, building a team around Boomer, not really. Um, I do consider him one of the purple four-star tanks. I just consider him probably either four or three out of the four or three tanks they have. So he's like the last one on there. Um, next up at number nine, I've got Stone Cleave. Now, Stone Cleave was up higher, but not by much. He was up the next one. I've had him at eight prior. Then I thought to myself, I said, I don't like Stone Cleave as much as I like number eight. So then I took him down. Stone Cleave becomes Ghost similar to Aviana, but then he attacks until he becomes Unghost, which is cool for 115 or whatever it is. Yeah, what is it? 100 and something attack. Let me make sure I got it right. So, which is cool. I like him. Like, I actually ran Ambion and Stonecleave together. And you'd be surprised how many times they get attacked even in ghost form. It's crazy. Uh, 175% attack against um, random enemies. It's random, so it's cool. Another Barb. Meh. I'm not putting Barb emblems on anybody four-star. Well, maybe. But, um, just not that great. I didn't realize he's susceptible to yellows, though. It says, remove all those effects from the cast. Removes all those... Uh, stats, effects, and stacks that are otherwise undispellable or uncleansable. The caster shifts to dire wolf form. While in dire wolf form, the caster automatically deals 175 damage against a random enemy each turn. While in dire wolf form, the caster cannot gain mana and is immune to normal attacks, special attacks, uh, status element effects, and stack Accept the damage from enemies 
whose element is stronger against the caster. So yellow, right there, he's susceptible to damage against enemy, uh, susceptible to damage from enemies who is whose element is strong against the caster. So yellow's is Stone Cleave's counter, even in Ghost form. I was wondering how he was dying one time when I was using him. And I was like, that's weird. So this is where I, this is why another reason I put him down. I think that's really whack. Um, he's in ghost form. Let him be a ghost. If you're a ghost, like, you know, unless you're the ghost busters, you can't get, you know, you can't, can't help nobody. But dire wolf form lasts four turns. He is really cool. Um, I do like him. I have used him a couple times. I probably will run him again on my next four star because I think it's kind of interesting when I have two ghosts on the board and nobody can, uh. Can, can do anything to them, and they still attack them. It's really interesting. Um, if you are running him on your teams, make sure you kill the yellows first, and then when he goes into dire wolf form, he does become invincible, which I think is pretty cool for the four turns, and then he can shoot off. And it's it'll actually, the ghost form in the tournaments actually save the rest of your team from getting hit sometimes, and that hit, believe it or not, will save you for matches. It has for me a couple of times. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, next up, we will go to number eight. And this is Jabbar. I thought long and hard about this, and I've I've fought tooth and nail about Jabbar in the past. People saying he's garbage and stuff like that. This just makes him all the more better because of some fact he got a family bonus of more defense. So now he's a true tank. Not to mention 13, 23 is the highest health on the four stars for purple for sure. I'm not sure about everybody else, but I want to say he's he's either two or or one for the highest health for four star um, overall. Um, Jabbar is a brick, and I love it. I run him as tank quite a bit, and so for the simple fact that his special when it goes off at two thirty five damage to three, uh, minor damage to the targets, that's fine. That's not what I'm using him for. He's gonna control seventy five percent. Uh, he's gonna give you a seventy five percent decrease against healing, and then he has his sand dot for four turns of one seventy two. Um. And he's a monk. He's actually really set up well to play his position. So he possibly can't be debuffed. Um, not to mention he cleanses himself. All of the sand guys do. So he's an overall around great tank. So even if his monk emblem, his monk ability doesn't dispel the buff, then he'll just dispel it with his special if nobody else can. And I think that's great for tank. Like, And he's going to go off at tank because he's middle and average. Um, he's one you can build a team around for a while. Um, and probably can, if you put some emblems on him, probably can hang in a five-star arena for a while, just for some fact his health. Now, he ain't gonna do no damage, but he's gonna survive, and that's what I like about him. He's really strong. I like Jabbar a lot. Uh, I think he is the best purple tank as far as the four-stars go, but that could change. Um, at number seven. I got Cypher. Now, this is one of the tanks that I think is the most usable in the four star because of the simple fact of the repost. Um, five turns, 125% damage repost. He's a paladin, so now he's going to get defense and he's going to be defensive against his uh, damage. And of course, Cypher has more health than Jafar, Jabbar, so that totally counteracts what I just said. I thought he was one of the higher ones in four star. Clearly, he is number two in purple because Cypher has more health. That's why Cypher is technically. Up here a little bit higher. I like Jafar with the defensive stats a little bit better. But the Reflect, this guy's a true tank. You can use him at the flank and on the tank spot for definitely different four-star tournaments. Um, I just like Jabbar better. But Cypher is more available and possibly better because of the simple fact that he protects more of your team than he does um, add to the offense. I'm more of a Jabbar player than a Cypher player. But Boral Cypher in combination... Legendary still works. I still struggle against it sometimes, especially with these 20 level Cyphers in um, Boral. And then you have two sides where you can't do anything without taking damage. It really, really sucks. And that's number seven, guys. At number six, I've got Sabina. Sabina, that's my girl. So this spells buff from all enemies. Yes, Sabina is uh is definitely one of those. I I, I this is my Second four star, and I think she's just one of those you serious stay. Now she is squishy with a 578 and a 1060, but she's a healer. And her new skin does look like it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, the reason Sabine is so high and probably above Cypher, and Cypher, I guess you could say, might be higher because she's more usable. He's more usable, but Sabina is that purple healer, and you got Rigard in here, so Rigard is going to be better than her overall. But uh, Sabina, that dispel against all similar to a Melandor. Um, 
I just remember using her. Like when when you get this hero, like and you don't have healers, this is one of the ones you're gonna use for a long time. That's why I got the healer so high. Like she stayed around in my teens because she was a healer. And like again, like I was saying, it's not when you get a five star are you going to heal her first. You're going to go to your damage first, then you're gonna go back to do healing if you still invest in this game. If you're not, you're going to your four star healers. Um I haven't done a callback to this being in a while. She probably should have made the Ninja Tower list for me, but I didn't. I had I have double regard, so that's probably why there. Um, I personally think she has a lot of playability. Um, I see people doing the like the regard one and then doing Sabina in, in in the other wing, so you have double healing. She is a little bit squishier. I can see her lower on the list. I just know that healing is really important, and she's gonna play longer in more parts of the game than some of the rest of the people versus where they're so specific based off their special that's why she's up here so high um but i could definitely see her lower at number oh hold on to be number six so at number five now we're in the top five guys i got proteus proteus is definitely number five atlanta buff defense he is a wizard a jinx doesn't really help him because he doesn't hit but his poison over three turns and then the fact that he silences the target um or, excuse me, he doesn't silence the target. Silent receives um, poison, done enough for three turns. The target nearby enemies gain no man, can't gain mana. Sorry. He doesn't allow you to get any mana. I knew it wasn't silence. I couldn't figure it out. But he doesn't get any mana. So, similar to Hell, um, they call him Baby Hell. This guy was annoying when he first came out. It's still annoying now. And he pairs really well with Gators and um, Triton. This guy, and I, I would pair him with other Atlantis people too. Um, really strong you get all four buffs you get the you get the three and he, you will get a pretty decent defensive up um excuse me pretty survivable good hit you know over that thousand mark so he he can stay alive for a little bit if he goes off it is hard to come back sometimes in these tournaments because you can't get any mana and then if you, i've seen people run two or one of him and if he goes off on the right hero you're just like golly i can't can't cleanse it or anything so i gotta get proteus up here i think he's real really active um you can even play him on uh events and when he first came out before people were having 35 stars he was pretty decent in war i've used him a couple times in war he, he can come in handy um definitely for raids though yeah yeah he's, he's not bad to have have a couple around or one around number four i got fura yo i love this chick I do. I love this chick, and I think she goes so well with the next three we're going to go with, um, or excuse me, the next, yeah, three people we go with. Fiora has a poison when she gets weak. Fiora is a wizard. Fiora takes your your health away. Fiora hits all for 150%, and then she does, she makes you to where you can't heal as well either. Let me see, one more thing. I think it's one more thing she does, and I was like, this chick is awesome. All right, so reduces the health the health from all enemies by 100 so you take 100 right off the rip now you see we've been doing four stars so you're talking about like a tenth or a ninth of everybody's health right off the rip uh health can't go lower than 30 percent so at, she can take you all the way down to basically 300 and possibly a little bit over right at 400 so really strong there all enemies get 50 percent decrease to any healing for four turns that comes in handy and it's everybody. I love this chick. I think she's awesome. She's already taking your health away, and then you can't heal up either. And she hits everybody. And then if you, she goes low, she poisons. I, I, I love her. I love her. She goes really well with her brother for fast. Um, everybody calls him, the, I guess, the, the four-star Evelyn. Mm, I like her better. And the reason I like her is because of tournaments. And I take her all the time with this next hero that makes her even stronger. And that's T-Bird skin. Oh, man. Electric guitar, T-Bird, kiss T-Bird. This guy right here, Tybertus, however you want to say his name. I call him T-Bird. Anyway, this guy right here is strong. I love him with her. So him, Boomer, and Fura, that, it's an excellent combination. I know that sounds weird, but like you just it's so much devastation because the hit all, hit all, hit all, and then the health starts shrinking down. And then the next person I put him with, um, which we'll go over in a minute, but the hit all the defense is down to all and it's at a 75%, and it's a little bit faster than average. D Bird's up here. This guy's really, really strong. You can flip him back and forth, uh, depending on what you need. 
Um, I personally like this skin. I haven't changed this skin since I got him up. This the, this guy actually made me. This skin actually made me use Tabertus. And after seeing Gormick and Grim skin, Tabertus is the best <laughs> defensive down for four star from season one. Those two skins were whack, man. Uh, and I mean they look good, but they're just whack. I can't believe what they did to Gormick, but you'll get you'll see it soon. Um, but uh, and then he turned him to a paladin, so he's a little bit stronger. Uh, defenses. Defense is increased, and I think his healing is increased. I think his tack might have went down, but it is what it is. A little bit faster. I like him. That defense is down to all with with another with two more hit alls from purple, and then I, I you can run even the the three hitters like uh, Jafar or Jabar, and I mean it just makes Jabar even that much better if he goes off of four. And then the icing on the cake for number two is Rigard. You can add the heal over time, cleanse the team, and make the attack up at 48. So now Ty Burst goes off with the defensive down with a massive hit. Uh, Fury goes off with a massive hit, and Boomer goes off with a massive hit. And now you guys are cleared. You've cleared the whole board. And they're all average, but some of them are increased. Maybe throw a Pirate in there and make um, Boomer faster. Whatever. Fury's fast, so she can go ahead and get it going. Um, but to Rigard, actually, I, I was surprised I did this, but and I know people are going to be like, what? But I had to, man. Rigard is now number two. I think he's probably one of the overall best four stars in the game, hands down, but I think somebody took his took his, took his his crown just recently. Um, so this guy has been plaguing Wars since he came out, and man, what great stats. 702 for health on a healer, uh, 1271 on the health. Uh, he's in, in a nice, a decent attack, and he's going to add attack. Now, Archer's the weakest thing about him. Sorry, my allergies. We've been doing this pavers. The dust has been killing me. Archer's the weakest thing about him. You don't need an archer that heals. I'm sorry. That's that's crap. Me and a cleric was better, but you can't change. After you get the skin max, you never change your tie burst back. I'm sorry. He's perfect for this meta. Heal over times with all the dots we got going. Attack up in a very lackluster offensive uh, off uh, or defensive uh, raids and wars. So he's going to help you all the way around. I don't mind people putting a, a little bit of investment in him. I, I personally can't, but Archer doesn't do anything for him, so that's why I wouldn't do it. But other than that, skin looks great. Look at that snazzy outfit he's got on. Like, I'd wear that in a costume. Or maybe not. Maybe to church. Maybe no, uh, no Texas tie, but other than that, that's a snazzy costume. So, if T Bird is number two, or if Rigar is number two, who is number one? Gotta give it to the new chick, man. Oh man, I had I have this Google, so I won't mess this up. So, Amatine. Amatine, which I think is totally wrong. How are they pronouncing that? But they said Amatine. I put it in Google Translate, so I wouldn't mess it up. But I messed it up anyway. Anyway, I think Amatine is definitely number one, man. Um, she is strong. This thing is strong. I don't have her stats right. I messed it up. I've got that looked up too, I believe. Let me see. I think she's at a 6.92 at a 5.61 defense and a 12.68 uh, health. So there you go. There. Let me see if I can't get you some specials or nothing like that. All right, here we go. So with Two, with two um, ninjas, she becomes, I want to say it's dodgy. Let's see. Let me make sure. I don't want to get my stats wrong. She becomes dodgy, and she becomes countery, I believe. Let me see. Let me see. Let me make sure. All right. So let's get something straight. She is a barb, weak, but I'm not mad at it because you can actually do something with her being a barb because I would have multiple barbs around her. But let's see what we got. So ninja family bonus. 5% chance to dodge or 10% chance to dodge. 5% chance to counterattack or 10% chance to counterattack with a 60 or a 90% damage between two of them or three of them. Bam. Great. So, now, her special. Her special does 100, 200, or three, 300%. So, that's the mana charges. So, I think these are low based off of her being maxed. Yeah, they are. So, I need to find a max version. It's been tough to try to find a max version of her. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Actually, I think I got one. Let me go look on Discord. Let me see if I can find it. So, I want to go over what she does because she's very similar to Onyx. And the reason I got her higher than um, 
regard is for the simple fact that she is going to be like insanely strong for for the charge on defense and offense as far as I'm concerned. People are saying like, nah, man, this is that and the third. They're only from I can't find them. I can't find the charges. So, all right. So she's going to do some damage to the target, and then she's going to debuff from dispel buffs from the target. So she dispels you and she hits you. That's the first charge. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh man, that was bad. All right. The second charge. She's going to dispel the target and nearby enemies and then do some damage. Okay? It's increased damage. Then she's going to dispel buffs from all enemies and then do some more damage to the all enemies. All right. So, the thing with these ninjas, and I, I guess I won't go deep into that because I'm after this, I have to actually start making some more content. So, I'll probably go into it then. Is... It's random on defense what they're going to do. But I'll be honest with you. I've seen the AI with these guys. They're going to do the smartest thing they can do. Like I've seen. I, I was playing Ninja Towers. And I had I think Cobalt down to mis minuscule health. Right. And so I think he was on charge one. And instead of him dying without using the charge. He used it the next turn. And then charged up when I didn't kill him. And I was like hold up. That was pretty smart. How would you do that? So, they say it's random, but I think what's going to happen is the on the defensive side with these ninjas, it's going to be based off where they're at. Like, if they know, okay, we're going to survive another turn, take the next charge. We're going to survive the next turn, take the next charge. Oh, we're dying? Slice. Slam them down. She's strong, and she hits hard as crap. Uh, during the Ninja Tower, she was super strong. Um, she's speedy. And honestly, if she just hits you the first time, she dispels the one who's got the buff. You know, it could be perfect. I'd run her at the one spot on defense. I'd run her at the five spot on defense. Whatever you want to do. I don't think I'd tank her. I might flank her with some uh, love. But um, she's going to be a beast. She's going to be really strong. And the weakest thing about her is that she's a barb. Uh, if you compare her with any of her pals... Um, it's over. I happen to get two. I'll probably level two. I happen to get two of the red, two of the blue, four stars. Um, I love both of them. I, I actually have my team right now set up to where I could run two complete five ninja ninja um, ninja squad. And they would be double purple, double blue, one green, and one red. So I could run like that, which I know that didn't make a lot of sense in my head. Or I could just run... You know, whatever. Anyway, a double purple or double blue on both. One purple, one green, one red. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So um, that's how I would run it. But um, it the ninja the ninjas man. I, I'm really behind this meta. I think this meta is gonna be super strong. I think you're about to see. I think we're about to see a big switch. I won't be surprised if you see a ninja team here pretty soon. Um, as far as like on defenses, just because of the counter and the dodge, man. And then you've got, I think it's Jay. You got just a couple of them that just do some crazy stuff. Um, I believe she is the best four star in the game, offensive wise and defensive wise. I personally would go complete offense and health with her if you can. Um, based off her charge, I probably would take the mana increase. I might take the crit increase so she's doing damage while she's uh, while she's while she's charging, so that way you're still doing massive damage, and then when she goes off, just smacks you. But definitely want to get her damage up so she hits even harder. Um, built-in counterattack, a built-in dodge with just a pairing of another color ninja, and her counterpart is the the blue chick that hits all two. Yeah. Four star has been changed. I'm sad they didn't give us a three star of these guys. Um, I really am. I think that's the that, I think that's the biggest disappointment about the ninjas is there's no three stars of them. Another disappointment is if you were going to do five five stars and three four stars, you could have dropped two three stars and just went ahead and went for the gusto and gave us 16 heroes this month. It's nuts. Um, I'm going off on kind of a tangent, not really about the four stars. But it's October 2020, Empires of Puzzles. 
has given you more heroes than I think we've ever gotten in the game at one time. Um, except maybe when a season release. And then you got the threes and the fours and then all the five stars. So maybe the season three dropped was the most heroes we got in one at one time. But this is really close. Um, I was doing the math. You got Zulag, right? You got the the eight ninjas. So that's nine right there. Okay, right? You got the one coming from season three. That makes that makes ten. You got the four coming from four coming from the the October event, and that would make fourteen right there, right? So fourteen heroes. If I'm missing somebody, let me know. But that's a that's a group of heroes in one month. This is a crazy month. Crazy month for Empires and Puzzles. But um guys, that's all I got. Like and subscribe to the videos. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Hopefully you like my list. I know Sabina was kinda high now that I'm thinking about it. Other than that, I don't got nothing else. Kill a kill out peace. And from here I'll be making different stuff. Probably Showing you more ninja stuff and then hopefully the October stuff and seasonal Christmas stuff here soon because I'm I'm excited about Christmas coming up. And then we've got Ruben and the Red Chick coming up from Valhalla. And I think it's Grimble, not Grimble. Anyway, Gabrielle or whatever her name is, the Blue Chick coming in November. A lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. If you guys already got Zulag, heads up. Don't pull your gold coins until November because October event lasts in November. Double check it when it comes out, but if it lasts in November, use your gold coins in November and get Glinda. I think it's Glinda. That's her name. Anyway, kill, kill out. Peace.